So you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, and it will read his mind. There the answer comes. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. to a video on inverse functions. The goals of the video are to define inverse functions, determine if a function has an inverse function, and lastly to determine the equation of an inverse function. So we're going to start off by talking about a special type of function, a one-to-one -one function. If a function is defined so that each range element or y value is used only once, then it is a one-to-one -one function. If every y value is only paired with one x value, we have a special type of function called a one-to-one -one function. And a horizontal line test helps determine graphically whether a function is one-to-one. -one. If a horizontal line does not intersect the graph of a function in more than one point, it is a one-to-one -one function. And what's so important about this is that only one-to-one -one functions have inverse functions. So for example, on this first graph, it passes the vertical line test, so it's a function. However, it fails the horizontal line test because these horizontal lines intersect the graph in more than one point. So this function is not one-to-one. -one. Now the second graph is a little bit of a trick question because it's not even a function because it fails the vertical line test. So if it's not a function, of course, it can't be a one-to-one -one function. So this last graph is the only function that is also a one-to-one -one function because these horizontal lines never intersect the graph in more than one point. So this is a one-to-one -one function, which means this function does have an inverse function. Well, now let's talk about what an inverse function is. Informally, a function and its inverse undo each other. For example, f of x equals 3 times x, and g of x equals x divided by 3. Well, multiplying by 3 and dividing by 3 are opposite operations and therefore undo each other. Therefore, f of x and g of x are inverses of one another. You can almost think of this as a conveyor belt, where we put an input here, and when this input goes into f, the output would be 3 times x or 3 times 2. The output would be a 6. Now if this output becomes the input into g, and g takes the input and divides by 3, 6 divided by 3, the output would be 2. So these two functions undo each other because what we start with is the same thing that we end up with. Another example would be f of x equals x plus 3, and g of x equals x minus 3. Obviously plus 3 and minus 3 are opposite operations, therefore these two functions undo each other, and therefore they're inverses of one another. Let's take a look at a more formal definition. If f is a function from a set a to a set b, then an inverse function of f is a function from b to a, with the property that a round trip or composition from a to b to a returns each element of the initial set to itself, which leads us to f of g of x will equal g of f of x, which equals x. And lastly, a function that has an inverse is called invertible, and the inverse function is then uniquely determined by f, and it's denoted by this inverse function notation. And be careful, this looks very similar to exponential notation, but this is inverse notation for function f. Okay, so next let's talk about how we determine an inverse function. First, we have to determine if the function is one-to-one. -one. If it's not one-to-one, -one, it will not have an inverse function. Step two, we'll interchange the x and y variables, and this new function is the inverse function. If the result is an equation, we need to solve the equation for y, and then replace y with our inverse function notation, showing it's the inverse of f. Now, of course, we could perform this procedure on any function, but the resulting inverse will only be another function if the original function is one-to-one. -one. 
To emphasize that, let's take a look at these four functions. Which of these are one-to-one -one functions, and what does it tell us about the function? Remember, to determine if a function is one-to-one, -one, we have to perform the horizontal line test. So this function quickly fails the horizontal line test, so it's not one-to-one. -one. This one obviously fails as well, and these on the right, they pass. Never will a horizontal line intersect the graph in more than one point. So what that means is these two on the right are one-to-one -one functions, and therefore these two have inverse functions, and these two do not have inverse functions. So let's go ahead and try to find some inverse functions. Here's a function that consists of three ordered pairs. So the inverse function would just consist of the ordered pairs 2, 1, 3, negative 2, and 2, 5. Notice how we just interchange the x and the y coordinates for these ordered pairs, and we have the inverse function. Now we should make a note that they told us the original functions were 1 to 1, therefore we can go ahead and find the inverse function without questioning whether they're 1 to 1 to begin with. Next we have an equation that we want to find the inverse of, so we're going to interchange the x and the y variables, so we'll have x equals y to the third plus 2. This is our inverse function, but now we do have to solve this for y. So we'll subtract 2 on both sides, Next, to find y, if we have y cubed, we'll take the cube root of both sides, so we'll have y equals the cube root of x minus 2. Now the last step is to replace this y with our inverse function notation. So we'll have f inverse of x is equal to the cube root of x minus 2. And to be consistent, let's go ahead and rewrite our original equation in function notation, and this would have been f of x equals x cubed plus 2. And let's take a moment and, and look at the graphs of these two functions together. Let's go ahead and type the original function into y1, and we'll type in our inverse function into y2, so we'll raise the quantity x minus 2 to the one-third power. And let's go ahead and graph y equals x as well. Let's go ahead and make sure we have the standard window, zoom 6. There's our function. There's our inverse function. And these two share a special geometric property in relation to the line y equals x. It'll become even more obvious if we press zoom square, zoom 5. And so another property of a function and its inverse is they're symmetrical across the line y equals x. And you can see if we were to fold these functions across this line y equals x, they'll match up perfectly with the other piece on the other side of y equals x. Let's take a look at two more. Again, we have another function that's given as one to one. So we'll go ahead and interchange our variables. We'll have x equals 2 divided by the quantity y minus 4. Remember that this given equation is a function which could have been written as f of x equals 2 divided by x minus 4. We need to solve this for y, so let's go ahead and perform cross products here. x times y minus 4 must equal 2. Now we'll divide by x on both sides. So we have y minus 4 equals 2 divided by x, add 4 to both sides. And the last step should be to replace our y variable with inverse function notation. So we'll have f inverse of x equals 2 divided by x plus 4. So here's our inverse function and here's our original function. Let's go ahead and summarize. In a one-to-one -one function, each y value corresponds to only one x value and it would also pass the vertical and horizontal line test. If a function f is a one to one, then it does have an inverse function. The domain of f is the range of f inverse, and the range of f is the domain of f inverse. Again, because we're interchanging the x and the y variables. And lastly, the graphs of f and f inverse are reflections of each other across the line y equals x. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching.